Hi, my name is Michaela Peters. Hi, I'm Taylor. My name is Hannah Nazero. Hi everyone, I'm Jen Hunter. I'm one of the R5s. I'm one of the R1s. PGY3. Because I'm an R3 in the UBC Orthopedic Residency Program. Uh, and I'm here to answer a couple questions. I'll let you know which questions I'm answering uh, as we go along. Uh, so the first one I'm going to answer is the an experience med school that led you to positively or negatively portray ortho for you. Uh, so I'm going to answer this one, ortho and surgery. Uh, during my clerkship in third year at the University of Ottawa, I was still debating whether to go into surgery, let alone ortho, or another uh, specialty because I had hopes of having a family and I was worried about juggling both a family um, and a career in surgery. And I had this preceptor, Dr. Zuem, who is a general surgeon at Montfort, and in my opinion, she had it all. She had this amazing family, she had this amazing career, and she really pushed me and uh, encouraged me to go into a career in surgery. Um, and seeing her life made me realize that you can have it all and you can, it is possible to juggle both. Uh, you just have to want both and um, yeah, I thank her a lot for helping me pursue this career. As a med student, I had a female orthopedic surgeon mentor, and I think that was a little bit unusual because there weren't that many uh, senior staff who were women at the time. And it was a bit by fluke how I was paired up with them on a uh, med student introduction to surgery kind of shadowing day. It was there where I fell in love with uh, joint replacements because we got into the OR, we did some arthroplasty, and everything else in med school went away. All of the discussion about nephrology and renal tubules and geriatric disorders, like that could all go, go on a shelf. And we didn't have to worry about it because for the moment we were just focused on managing the arthritis, fixing the disorder, making this person better. And I think that's one of the reasons that I fell in love with ortho and I'm still into it today. Um, one that led me positively um, portray ortho for me was again at this uh, hospital Montfort at University of Ottawa. They had this amazing ortho team. And when I started showing interest and wanting to pursue it, uh, there was no hesitation um, and they all, they were such a great group and they helped me pick my electives, they helped me um, kind of decide where and what electives to do and really encouraged me and pushed me to go into a career in ortho. And like Dr. Jam, they all had amazing lives um, inside and outside of their career and it really made me realize that it is possible to juggle both a career in surgery and family. Throughout residency here at UBC. I've had a lot of ongoing mentorship that has, I think, evolved throughout my junior to senior residency. And I think that evolves very naturally because as a junior resident, you're not entirely sure what you want to do. You're trying to survive, uh, just get through. And so some of your mentors just happen to be the R fours and fives and people who make it look easy because they've already survived the junior residency or the people who really support your teaching and learning at, at that young stage. But as I've uh, come to sort of select my career paths, I've had a little bit more specific mentorship from some of the uh, surgeons in the recon group here at UBC and also some really good mentorship just in general from some of the other surgeons in the program, just in terms of life advice, uh, thoughts on where you would want to do fellowship. And when you start to think about what your life is going to look like beyond residency, because uh, all of a sudden five years goes by really quickly, then it's good to have a lot of different sounding boards and people to turn to. Wonderful parts about the changing environment of uh, orthopedics to include more women in orthopedics is uh, the fact that it's not just drawing a single type of woman to orthopedics, but a broad variety of uh, people who uh, have great interests uh, across orthopedics and outside of orthopedics. I see this all the time with the staff that I have a chance to work with who are female, as well as all of my um, co-residents who also 
um, our female. We are just all such different and uh, diverse people with a great variety of uh, interests and knowledge. Uh, and I have an opportunity to learn more from them each and every day. We've had a really good run of a lot of diversity uh, throughout my whole training year here. And I've had a lot of uh, both women and men who have been my mentors throughout residency, as well as throughout med school that have got me all the way up to this point here, which is our five. Uh, the next question I'm gonna uh, answer is, uh, what are your aspirations as an orthopedic surgeon and what are your interests, both personal and professional? Uh, so for me in ortho, I hope to be a community orthopedic surgeon. My husband and I are both from small towns and that's where we want to end up. Unfortunately, our families are 5,000 kilometers apart, so hopefully we can get to a community that is close to one of them. But anywhere in Canada, we'd be happy. Uh, so as of now, I'm hoping to do a fellowship in arthroplasty. Not quite sure where, but we will see, and I have lots of time to figure that out. Sort of full circle, I am actually still interested in arthroplasty, and I'm going to be uh, doing a fellowship in joints of my own in Ottawa coming up in the next couple of years. Um, my interests outside of ortho include anything outside, so BC is perfect for that. Um, my husband and I, we enjoy running-ish, him more than me, uh, skiing, hiking, and I really like volleyball, so Kitts Beach is perfect. And hopefully we can bring our little one on all these little adventures. We actually just bought a Volkswagen Westphalia, which we're super excited about, and hopefully we can get out and do some family camping trips since no one can go anywhere internationally for a really long time. All right, so the last question I was gonna answer was about having a baby in residency, which obviously I have had. How and when to have children. Having kids in residency. Uh, choosing to have kids in residency and the support of your program. Having mat leave and the support from co-residents and staff. Um, so as I said, I'm an R1. This is Cedar, she's my daughter, and she's four and a half months old. Uh, and I had her just at the end of first year. I was able to work until July 1st, and she was born on July 7th. I had my first baby in R2, um, so she just turned two yesterday, actually. Her name's Brielle, and I'm pregnant with my second now. I'm in my second trimester, I am pregnant. And that's a big decision for me and my family. Um, so for me, like I said before, uh, family was always something that I wanted. I wasn't really planning on having one in first year of residency, uh, but so be it. Um, and I just wanted to note that um, I had female residents before me who had babies in residency, and I think they really paved the path for uh, the program and for other residents in terms of feeling comfortable bringing forward uh, that they were trying or that they were pregnant and I was really lucky and fortunate I can only speak positively about the program the staff and the co-residents about the support and encouragement that I had uh, while I was pregnant and then also uh, for making a decision to take a year off for my maternity leave. Um, I was again kind of hesitant, I wasn't sure if I wanted to take six months or a year, if I wanted to push back my residency, and no one pushed me either way, and then when I started saying I think I'm gonna take a year, everyone was just super happy for me because they realized that this time is precious and it's, you don't, um, once you're staff, you don't really get the luxury of taking a year with your little one uh, and becoming a mom, uh, is a big change so to kind of take it um, at your own pace and take as much time as you need so I'm really happy that I'm taking a year and that um, I got the support from all of the residents and the staff as well. Um, otherwise uh, pregnant in residency it's not super fun you're tired and you're nauseous but um, you're tired anyways and like I said everyone's really supportive they check in on you um, and going back, I can't really speak to that. I know that in R2 it's going to be tough because R2 is a tough year um, here at UBC and having a little baby around is going to be hard, but you know, there's other residents that have done it so you can do it, I can do it, and um, I have an amazing partner and we're going to have family support so it's going to be tough, but it's definitely going to be a wild ride. Easy, easy. We're pretty excited about being parents and being first-time parents. 
uh, during residency. It's a bit scary to be doing it in my R5 year, but sometimes biology, you know, those things happen. Some of the reasons why I chose uh, to have a baby in residency, and I, it wasn't a light decision because surgical residency is taxing, is that there is a lot of support. And the support comes from the top, it comes from the program director and the philosophy of the group here at UBC. And the fact that um, I'm supported by my family at home, by the program director at work, by the policies that are outlined in my contract, by the fact that while you're a resident, you do have a bit of a union and some backup, uh, things like health insurance and uh, the ability to go on mat leave. Those all are factors that uh, made a big difference. Consider the uh, counter side of that, of waiting to have children outside of residency and once you're finished uh, training and fellowship. And then you may or may not be dealing with issues of surrounding having children later in life um, uh, with respect to fertility or even job prospects. You know, I, I do uh, wonder and believe that there can be an intrinsic bias when you go to uh, a job interview as a woman in your uh, mid to uh, in your mid thirties uh, without uh, having had children yet. And I do uh, wonder if uh, you are looked upon differently than a uh, male uh, uh, job interviewee um, in the fact that uh, you m may have this big red flag on uh, across your forehead saying hire me and I'll go on that leave uh, so I do I do wonder if that is an ongoing bias that we you know we do need to continue to watch overcome we do see more and more women uh, like myself having children in residency and of course, it's, it is quite challenging. Uh, however, our programs, uh, certainly I can speak for our program and our, the co-residents and stuff that I work with are very supportive of this, um, but it still comes with uh, its challenges in terms of time management. And I'd have to say that the resident group has been universally supportive because I think as a group, uh, you know, we're 25 people strong, which is big, but feels, uh, small and close together. I don't think there's a single person that I couldn't rely on uh, in this residency program if I was struggling or if I needed a day or if I had something uh, that was happening because of my pregnancy. There's people who are here to help us all get through it together. And I think likewise, the same. I get the same support from the staff. And I think it's, you know, there are some people who go through pregnancy and they definitely make it look easy uh, and I can't say that it is it's it's not totally easy you're exhausted and tired uh, there's extra hormones on top of extra work but you know the staff in general are all people who have families they've seen it they've been there they've been the young trainee and they've survived that moment and I think there's a lot of uh, empathy and support and ability for me to really lay out what the right balance is for me at the time. I think as a senior resident being pregnant, I have a bit of an easier time laying out my boundaries. And I think some of that just becomes a little bit more natural when you become a mom-to-be. Uh, you have some learning priorities and then also health priorities that can go together, uh, but you get pretty good at setting what your boundaries are and figuring out how you best maximize your time in your day uh, to get everything done. And all of a sudden it does, it, it gets done. Um, some things that I've found that have been really helpful is to really carve out time for each of the different roles in my life. So when I'm at work, I'm at work and I'm focusing on work and if I've got any downtime during the day, that's when I'm going to be studying and uh, working on any research papers and that kind of thing. I make sure that I take all my research time that's uh, available to me. So that's one day a block. And I go into the resident room and I actually work on my research during that time because I know that if I'm at home, I'm going to have trouble staying focused. 
Um, once I'm home, at the end of the day, I turn off my pager. That's very important. Turn off your pager. I put my phone, well, not always successfully, I try and put my phone away um, somewhere where I'm not going to be checking it. And I really focus on spending time with my family and with my kid uh, until it's time for bed. Some other things that I found helpful are making sure that you pay for help to do anything possible. So we have a cleaner that comes in once every two weeks and cleans our house. Um, and we found a really great cleaner who will come in and do that while we're not home. She has a key to our house, just does her thing. Uh, we also pay someone to cook for us. So every second week, um, our cooking lady comes in, fills our fridge with pre-made meals um, that my husband can then just take out and warm up for the family. Uh, and I, in my family, my husband does a ton. He's very, very supportive um, and take care of a lot of things around the house. But cooking is not one of the things that he, <laughs> it's not one of the skills that he is blessed with. So that's one way that we've kind of found to offload that. Um, and then anything that doesn't matter, I try and just leave undone. So I'm going to show you guys my living room right now. <laughs> this is probably it in a cleaner state. This is because our cleaning lady came four days ago, which is a long time when you have a toddler. So you'll see it's a mess. So this is a crib mattress on the floor because it makes the best toddler present ever. We're getting ready for Christmas. So we've got our tree stand ready there, but I haven't gotten around to getting a tree. So it's just hanging out there. I have things strewn all over the table. Toys are on the floor. We went outside and had some fun in the snow today. So all of our snow stuff's hanging up. Um, we will eventually clean the food off of the kitchen table. That is something that we try and put away regularly. Um, but it doesn't matter if my house is a bit of a mess. It's clean under there, I promise. It's just untidy. Sometimes you just gotta let that go. Pregnancy and residency can be very difficult. Um, I personally, like my first pregnancy was very, very hard in that um, I had a lot of nausea and vomiting of pregnancy. I had to go off call very early because I was requiring IV fluids post call. Um, I had a lot of syncope in the OR to the point where from, I don't remember, probably around six or eight weeks, I was having syncopal episodes on a daily basis and I actually had to stop operating for a good chunk of my pregnancy. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of clinics, a lot of day call, uh, to try and cover as much as I could. I was working closely with my care team to, um, do whatever I could to be a good resident. But the reality is I couldn't do the same things my colleagues could do. I just, my body couldn't handle that. And I'm finding with this second pregnancy, I'm now 12 weeks. Um, I've started having syncopal episodes in the OR again. You do everything you can, but you just have to have some grace for yourself and you need to ask for help when you need it. Um, so for me, that means I'm considered a high risk pregnancy. I need to be seeing my care team regularly and making time for that and really listening to them about whatever restrictions are in place. It is possible. Um, in between pregnancies, I'm told that I am still a reasonable resident. Uh, despite whatever limitations I have when I'm pregnant. Uh, and I'm hoping that I'm able to get through as much of this pregnancy as possible while still working. But if you need to take sick leave, you need to take sick leave. And that's just reality. You're not less of a resident or less of a mother, less of anything if you need to do that. Um, well, I'm always happy to chat with anyone else if you're thinking about doing this, uh, as it's quite difficult and it's a hard decision about timing of children and everything. Uh, for me, uh, my partner and I just decided that we were ready to have kids and I was watching friends around me go through IVF and having trouble with fertility. We just didn't want to wait. We found that this was the best time for us. That's not true for everyone, so you just have to decide what's best for you. You know, a day in the life for me, which I'm sure is not dissimilar to a lot of other female residents uh, or uh, some of my male residents who have uh, children, as well as uh, both, both uh, male and female staff that I work with who uh, have children, uh, is divided uh, between uh, my work and, you know, doing day-to-day -day resident activities, rounding, preparing for ORs the next day, doing call, uh, and also trying to segregate and separate that uh, from, uh, like, as a mom, where I need to and want to uh, spend time with my family and my son. And uh, it can sometimes be quite challenging, uh, but I think uh, these, uh, you know, 
being thrown in multiple directions all the time um, between your family and your work ultimately helps you uh, prepare to be uh, a better staff in uh, at the end of residency and fellowship when the demands are pulling you every which way and I, I, I welcome that challenge uh, daily and I hope that uh, each day I become a better and stronger person for it. So if you guys have any questions about anything uh, you guys can email me and um, feel free to ask any questions or if you just want to chat. Stay tuned, we'll let you know as the year comes to an end how things go. And we're looking forward to welcoming another ortho baby to this UBC family in the spring. And there's lots of ortho babies here, so it's a really good family to be part of. See ya, bye.